We are live! Welcome back to JJ Rick's Rides of Waymo. Uh, three, two, one, go. Oh, shoot. Heading to 7158 East 5th Avenue. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, press the call support button to speak with a rider support agent. Yes, so... Uh, happy Friday. Ha happy Friday, yes, thank you. Uh... <laughs> Yes, we're starting at the Costco, and there, that car had a 30-minute wait time. That is, I have just been sitting there for 30 minutes. It is nice to see Waymo getting actual use, but it is annoying to compete with everybody for cars sometimes. So, yeah, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully SF tomorrow is... I have, honestly have no idea, but uh, I hope it's really packed with Waymo so you can... Uh, get quick rides. I don't know. A little bit of interesting path planning there. Um, just, you know, Escape from the Costco essentially is the name of the game here. Uh, yeah, looks like we got a nice 17 minute video lined up here. Uh, I'd like to go for longer, of course, for cost optimization, even though, again, this is series is graciously sponsored by Array Labs. They are amazing. So I don't, I don't have to worry about that, which is really, really amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah. Thank you once again to them for sponsoring me to fly out here and fly to SF. Um, absolutely incredible. Looks like we've done it. All right. And uh, I have absolutely eviscerated the battery of my phone today uh, from all the live streaming and stuff. So I'm trying to charge in the back here. I'm gonna, my cable's kind of broken. Uh oh. I'll deal with that. In the meantime, we are making it out onto the main road here. Yeah, GoPro battery, 64%. You got, I got another 40 minutes into it, uh, I suppose. So. Okay, going around the bus. A little bit of slowing down for the bus. Not too much.
always very cool to see the reflection of, of, the, of the car in, uh, you know, in windows or in other vehicles. Just to remind you what, riding in style. Love the style. Oh man, love this. This is such a thing now. It is, in such a short time, it has become a thing. It is amazing. Um, oh my gosh, I just saw an apartment called Arcadia on 49th. Or my, I have just, many Doctor Who fans in the audience, and I just watched uh, The Day of the Doctor again. It's like, I was there at the fall of Arcadia. Like, now the, the word Arcadia is ruined for me now, so thank you, Doctor Who. Uh, okay, now hold on a second. Okay, I, it was a little bit chilly in here, so I was wondering if the temperature of the thermostat sinks between, like, sinks to your rider account, because that would be legendary attention to detail. But I don't think that's, I don't think that happened here, because it says it says that. Um, that's fine. Uh, yeah, sometimes you don't always want it like that, but. Um, silence here and I'm uh, replying to emails in the back seat uh, but sometimes uh, Arcadia again oh my gosh maybe maybe I should just be more quiet if I don't actually have something to say but I don't know Construction zone on the left side there. Um, I'm looking forward to the day when there's a full construction blockage. Uh, I would imagine that Waymo goes out of the way to avoid those, so it'd be tough. But hey, folks! Quick pause from today's Waymo adventures to introduce you to the company that made these Phoenix and San Francisco trips all possible. I'd like to give a big shout out to Array Labs, a space startup in Silicon Valley, for sponsoring this series. But what is a space startup doing sponsoring a self-driving car YouTuber? Well, here's why. Array's product isn't its satellite clusters. While they are cool, those satellite clusters are just a means to an end. Array's product is its high-resolution, frequently refreshed 3D data with continental-level coverage. So in the next few years, Array will be able to serve up 3D point cloud data, yes, the same type of data that today's Level 4 autonomous vehicles use, for massive coverage areas at a fraction of the price. Array aims to serve self-driving companies as some of its first customers at launch by essentially giving them a new feed of 3D data that they can use and they can tap into to help make and update their maps, evaluate new markets, and detect changes such as construction or closed roads that are happening within their fleet service areas. So essentially, it's turning satellites into a sensor for a car, and that's really cool. I'm excited to tell you more about the technology in the coming weeks, but for now, let's get back to the ride. Um, 
So there's a cone on the screen that's flashing in and out of existence. I'm trying to line it up with real life here, see which one that is. One, two, three, four, and a sign. Yeah, there's not one there on the line, but there is a road sign of some kind. Um, still, those cones are behind a barrier and are like, you know, have caution tape on them and you can only kind of see the, I don't know, I'm just impressed that I can not only pinpoint those, like, but also, you know, take them into account and that. that is just absolutely wild. The computer vision boggles my mind. <laughs> I'll just say it. Um, oh, two light cycles. Come on. <laughs> oh, green. Yes. Okay. All right. That was, that was a weird intersection. Um, goodness gracious. That's probably like a two minute light countdown timer on the screen there. I don't, I don't know. If we ever get a, a red light longer than five minutes, I'll have to go remake the graphic for the countdown timer. Thankfully, I don't think we've seen that. Because, um, fun fact, the, yeah, the red light countdown timer uh, graphic made in After Effects is only five minutes long. Which, you know, should be fine in 99.99% .99 of cases, but... I don't know. Does anyone actually use those? Do you, do you skip forward in the video if there's a red light? I don't know. Let me know. It's kind of... I mean, I hope it's helpful. Um, but yeah, anyway. So. Okay, coming up on the right turn at a high rate of speed. Let's go! Uh, okay, slowing down to reasonable levels. The, I swear, this never gets old. I don't even care. It's so much fun. Um, oh, for Luke, the battery range is 90 miles. So there you go. Um, the left lane, right lane changes in the, in the timestamps? I don't know. They don't seem to be that interesting anymore. Although sometimes the, the gap that it slides into is truly impressive, but yeah. Welcome to Scottsdale. I don't know when we technically entered the uh, city limits, but... So it looks like we are headed right into the middle of Old Town Scottsdale. If uh, if my map reading skills are up to par, up to snuff.
two minutes. Scottsdale Road, okay. Any Phoenix local will know the uh, Shane Co. Uh, Almost there. Don't forget your belongings. Commercial radio commercial where they say the cross streets. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of local versions of that. It hasn't been on. Uh, that those that run of commercials hasn't been on the radio for a while, but uh, they don't. Yeah, they, they don't say the cross streets anymore. They just tell you the website, which is like lame. Come on. <laughs> Oh, there's another Seize Candies up here. Uh, last time we went to Seize Candies in a, in a Waymo video was when I got my new camera for the first time. The, the same camera that's recording the screen now is the one that was I was using as the main recording camera then. Um, that, that's a throwback. Oh yeah, this is... Nice and, uh, okay, what are we doing here? Our, oof, I thought we were going to use a parking spot. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we going to... Uh-oh. You're here. Please make oh, sure it's okay. clear before exiting. That's fine. All right. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. And thank you to Array Labs for sponsoring this series. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you next time.